Hello, back again on my channel, Learn Operations Management with Giuliani. And this is the very first time we will do an expert talk, namely talking with practitioners from the industry, aiming to get an idea on how the operations management is being implemented in the industry. And today we have a very special guest. It's Mr. Oki, who is a project manager at an agribusiness company in Australia and also New Zealand. So hello, Mr. Oki, how are you? Oh, pretty good, thanks. How are you guys? Um, my name is Oki Octanio. I'm um, a lead developer. Uh, you, you can may say um, I do the project management in my company as well. And yeah, um, it's been good here as well. So how, how, is, how is business in, in this pandemic? Well, that's, that's the good thing about my company because my company works in the agriculture, basically, or all the business of my company dealing with grower, with a farmer. So even though you're in lockdown, especially in Melbourne, I live in Melbourne, it's lockdown, you can't go anywhere, but you still need food. That's the good thing about business. We can survive because we're dealing with food. Great, great. It's it's really nice to hear that. And by the way, thank you very much for willing to attend this expert talk. <laughs> so I'm going to jump into my first question, Mr. Oki. So can you tell us about your work? What are your duties and responsibilities? Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, I'm a lead programmer. Uh, so I do the leading building a software, especially for the farmer and the processor. And we're, we're standing in the middle, trying to keep a communication between the farmer and, and the processor. So if you know Nestle, you, if you know, uh, if you know in a one industry, like Brown Brothers or Enfold, mm. that kind of brand, yes, we are in the middle who give um, a service so their grower, their farmer can talk to the processor how to deal with the quality assurance or with the food safety, whether they comply with the rules and etc. basically. And um, my company, it's basically made that uh, its main focus is in dairy, in wine, fruit, uh, industry, you know, hay, you know, uh, bread, the one that you have uh, on bread, bread, it's from the hay and barley and etc. Yes, we are helping them so they can uh, produce uh, their uh, food and their dairy to comply with other countries, especially if we are going to export them. We need to comply with Indonesian, we need to comply with Singaporean, Japanese rules. Each country has their own rules. So we help them to check whether they're doing the right thing. It's, it's very um, interesting uh, to know that your, your work is basically along the supply chains of this agribusiness uh, industry, right? Yeah. So if I'm not wrong that uh, you are the uh, project leader a kind of yeah. project leader. So, uh, what can, can you tell us? Um, how how is the process um, to start a new project um, to oh. fulfill the uh, your your client needs, especially uh, when they need, let's say, it's a new IT platform? Can you tell us the example? So uh, the the challenges that we're dealing with um, this industry is basically you. Most of the time, you're dealing with elderly because most of the farmer, most of the um, grower, they're old people. So you tend to uh, really have to speak slowly, have to make your words, it's not too high. You have to right. make it very, very down to earth so they can... Yeah. <laughs> make it simple okay make it simple as simple as possible 
And the other thing is, uh, my company is, it's a small company. It's not a really huge company with hundreds, hundreds of people. Probably it's just five people in my company. But the thing is, when we're dealing with a project, you don't know whether it's the project is big or small. Once you've got a, a big project, what you can, uh, you can do is outsource them. That's the challenges that we're dealing with. You have to outsource them at the time where, when you're dealing with a big project. What's the challenges with outsourcing them? First, you have a time difference. When you outsource to Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, and Philippines, of course, you've got time differences. And the second one is cultures. Each of them have different cultures, especially even though uh, I, I live in Melbourne and then I have to outsource it with the people in Melbourne. Well, Melbourne, basically, you can meet African, you can meet South American here, you can meet Japanese, Chinese, any countries you you can think about will be here. So what's what's the challenge is dealing with that, that kind of thing is you have to learn that culture. You you have to accept the challenges that you're dealing with with different cultures, different behavior, and how can you manage them. That's the challenges that I'm dealing with these days. Well, that's very uh, interesting uh, that when you do this kind of outsource, then there will be cultures um, issue on that. Uh, but then, was there any experience uh, before when you when you were dealing with, let's say, lateness in the project, uh, dealing with the vendor uh, or outsourced? And what did you do at the time to overcome these problems? Well, offer the deadline, um, passing mm -hmm. the deadline. It's it's a very common and you may say in the real life it's very common that's that's why you you need to know your resources know your people understand them you you need to know their skills listen to them then you can make a plan uh, a project plan that at least as accurate as possible so you can keep a um a time frame to the stakeholders uh yeah we can deliver it in a um, six months time. How can you predict that that time frame? You have to know your resources. That's the first rules that you need to learn and understand. Um, try try to listen to them, especially uh, especially in English, because um, you're dealing with so many people from so many countries, uh, the thing that I learned in here, you have to respect them, even though their English is not that good. If you look them not with respect, you're going to lose the potential, the big potential that you can gain to deliver your product on time. That's the key, the key of success being a, a, a project manager, especially. And the thing about being, um, the, the other thing about building a project, um, it's the new system that you're going to introduce. Basically, some people in the company that you're going to deal with, they're trying to reject whatever you're planning to implement because it's a new thing for whatever reason some some people think that ah if a, a, a new system coming in to my company it means i'm gonna lose my job that's one thing the second second one is politics you can't get away with politics in a company how can you deal with politics try to resolve it by yourself. That's the, the first um, thing that you can do. But if you got stuck, good. the last effort that you need to do is go to their boss. A boss always has a boss. Go 
to the boss. There's no other way. You mean the, the top level in the organization, right? Yes. <laughs> That's well, so it's, it's, it seems like it's very challenging um, dealing with this kind of project management things. Um, having a good planning, especially when you are working with uh, people from other countries, there will be culture barriers, probably also language barrier. And then on the other hand is also how to dealing with the resources when problems arise. And I'm quite surprised that this is not the end of, of, of the uh, project management scope that right after you, let's say you, you are ready with the product, but then how to make sure that the users accept the platform and willing to use it since yeah. this is the new things. Okay. Yeah, that that's, is very challenging. Yeah, it is. It is. That, even though your product is really good, you're right. Once your your product being implemented, you have to make sure people using it because it's going to be useless. And and the boss will your boss and the the comp, your client's boss will see it as a success only if the people are using it. If it's nobody else using it. It's gonna be useless. They're they're going to scrap it. That's the the challenges that you need to once you implement, you have to revisit and you have to give training. And training and then persuade them to use the system. That's that's the key success of implementing a a, a, a project, whether it's a, a, a new project or whether it's modifying what you've got in their uh, environment. Okay, that's a very nice sharing, Mr. Oki. Uh, I'm afraid that we have a very limited time. So, uh, well, this is the end of our expert talk. It was my last questions for you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And we wish you a good health and success. Um, thank you and bye bye everyone. And we will see you again in the next expert talk. See you. Thank you guys, bye.